Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to my workshop. For those who are new here, I'm Neil and I make things, mainly from wood, but sometimes I dabble in other materials. While the majority of my maker income comes from wholesale orders, I always keep some items available on my Etsy store, and it's a great place to sell some of the one-off pieces I make. Today I'm making a batch of darning mushrooms. They're a product I developed with the help of a knitting designer and retailer. They were initially a wholesale order for them to sell exclusively. They've since closed the retail side of their business and they encouraged me to keep making these available myself. I've sold out of them, so it's time to make some more and get them on Etsy. Items like this are great to batch produce and sell on Etsy, as in my experience, Etsy isn't really set up for one-off products. I guess it makes sense, there's no point in them promoting a product that only one customer can buy. I like to make sure I have a mixture of products that I can produce several of, and products I only have one of. So my wood selection for these mushrooms is oak for the head and sycamore for the stem. Both of these are sourced from Scottish wood, who are a local sawmill to me, and both of these timbers are native and sustainable. I'm looking for the clearest grain I can for the head, as I want to be able to sand it incredibly smooth so as to ensure there are no snags on the item being darned. Oak is great wood for this, as you can get a really good finish. I love making functional pieces. Whilst this isn't the most technical item I could make, it's so great to know that each one that sells is going to be used by someone, and even better to know they'll help extend the life of another, probably handmade item. So far, you've seen me use my template to mark out the oak for the heads. I've drilled a larger hole for the lathe chuck to grip and a smaller hole to act as the mortise for the stem to attach it. The next step is to take it to the bandsaw and roughly cut out all of the black. I'm deliberately cutting these slightly large so that I can true them up when I start. Having something sensible to keep all of the parts in as I make them makes a big difference while I'm batch producing products. I've found that wooden wine boxes, the type you might get a bottle gifted to you in, work really well for this. The next step is to start shaping the heads, and the key here is to be as consistent as I can be. I can't share individual photos of every one I make, so they all need to be near identical to ensure customers are getting what they expect. I have a mixture of HSS and carbide tools and the debate can go on for days as to which are best, but for these mushrooms the carbides work really well. I'm not trying to take large quantities of material off, it's more about shaping and getting a good finish. Having produced and sold nearly 200 of these now, I no longer use a template for the curve, but I did for the first 50 or so. After a while it becomes muscle memory. After using the square carbine tool to shape the head, I move on to using the parting tool to define the final thickness, and then use the square carbine tool again to remove excess and give me good access for sanding. You can see quite clearly here the final shape of the head. The flat surface on the top was a key element that my original client had me include. I would probably have tried to round it all the way across, but apparently having a flatter section makes it easier to use. This is the kind of knowledge that you only get by working closely with someone who will be actually using the product, and it's why it's so valuable to do so. For the benefit of everyone, I've sped up the sanding process here. The short version is that I sand each piece using 80, 120, 240, 320, 400, and finally 600 grit sandpaper. On the lower grits, it's important to be careful not to end up changing the shape of the object being sanded, and therefore I regularly stop the lathe and take a look at the progress. It's worth noting that I usually use a sanding mesh rather than these papers, but I had a shortage of mesh and an abundance of paper whilst making this batch. I find sanding with the mesh is usually a faster process. I then use a pull saw to cut the head from the blank. If I could get a vacuum chuck small enough, I'd turn the piece round and remove the excess on the lathe, but I'm yet to find one that's small enough for these pieces. This leaves me with a box of heads and it's time to move on to the stems. 
The stems are made from sycamore and it's a wood I really enjoy turning. Sycamore is a name that can be given to many different trees, so you have to be aware of what you're buying. But for me, I know it's local Scottish sycamore, which has a Latin name that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. It's a nice wood to turn and behaves very like a typical maple, and in fact has a similar colouring. When I'm turning the handle or stem, there's a balance to be found between form and function. Of course, I want this to be a beautiful item to look at and enjoyable to own, but it fails if it doesn't function. It needs to feel nice in the hand, it needs to be shaped to ensure it doesn't slip or move as it's being used. This is the benefit of developing products in collaboration with experts. While I could just copy the shape of something I found online, I have no guarantee that it works. Instead, by working with experts and people who use these products, I was able to prototype and test a variety of versions until we got something that they loved. Here I'm using a parting tool to define the shoulder where the stem meets the head. This tool enables me to get a clean edge and to bring the curve right up to the shoulder. I follow this with the square carbide bit to reduce the size of the tenon on the end of the stem. I don't want to make this too weak at this point as there's a fair bit of shaping and sanding to go. It's better to keep the strength in the piece until no longer needed. Using the diamond carbide tool, I shape the end and separate the piece from the tailstock support. This will get a final tidy up in sanding, but the closer I can get it, the better at this stage. And then it's back to sanding. Same grits as before, same process. Again, I need to be careful not to change the shape with the lower grits, and I stop regularly to look at the piece and check it's progressing how I want it to. It's really easy to rush the sanding process, but getting it right is key to a great final product. It's worth the time invested, even if it's a bit boring to do. I can then use my calipers to check the diameter of the tenon on the end of the stem. This needs to match the smaller of the two holes I drilled back at the beginning of the video. And that's the stem finished. All that's left is to use the bandsaw to remove the excess that was used to hold it in the lathe. So now I have a box of parts and we can start the final approach. It starts with a load of hand sanding of the flat surface of the heads. This is to clear up the saw marks and to bring the finish up to the same 600 grit as the rest of the product. I use a board with sandpapers taped to it in order so that I can work my way along and know that I've not missed any grit. After sanding to achieve a beautifully smooth and flat surface, I then use a sanding sponge to knock the sharp corner off. It's important that when used with knitted products, this isn't going to snag the material. A medium CA glue is used to attach the head to the stem and I check carefully to align the grain. It just looks better to me that way. Using an accelerant spray gives a fast set time, but it means you've only got one shot to get it right. Finish is important, especially on functional products. There are so many options out there and everyone will tell you theirs is best, but there's something nice about finishing an item with a finish you made yourself. For these mushrooms, I finish them with a blend of mineral oil and beeswax that I make myself over a camp stove in the workshop. It's based on a recipe that I found on Rag and Bone Brown's channel, which I'll link below. It's well worth checking out. After leaving the finish for a while and buffing it off, I'm left with the finished item. I'll get the photos and the details uploaded to Etsy, set up the price and the shipping info and put it live. A couple of social media posts to let people know they're back in stock and hopefully watch the sales come in. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my ramblings about the process. If you enjoy this type of content, please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. There's another video you might like here and a handy subscribe button here and if you want to own one of the mushrooms, the link is in the description below. Thanks for stopping by, see you on the next one.